Hi everyone, I'm Richard and today we're going to be kind of taking a look at the very best PlayStation 4 Pro titles that money can buy. So let's say you've just got the console for Christmas. Let's say that you've just bought a 4K screen. What are the games that are going to show this console at its best? And joining me to go through our list of contenders is Tom Morgan. Nice to be here. <laughs> Very nice to be here indeed. So Tom, let's talk through the categories first of all. Right, so initially we were going to go for a top seven sort of format, but then we realized there are a couple of prerequisites you've got when buying a PS4 Pro. Um, the number one of which is uh, how it best uses a 4K display. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of big games in this one. Uh, I think we can kick off right away. Okay. Uh, uh, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, this was by Insomniac Games and it's awesome on base PlayStation 4 hardware and on the Pro you get what looks like a native 4K presentation but it's not actually native 4K, I mean that's how good these uh, next generation upscalers are these days. It uses a technique called temporal injection to kind of uh, retrieve information from previous frames and to kind of reconstitute what looks like a native 4K presentation. So yeah, when we were looking at that one, we were kind of eyeballing it from like less than a meter away and it yeah. was really holding up well. And uh, yeah, I mean, the more you play the game, the more action kicks off and it holds its frame rate as well. 30 frames per second, locked. This might be my pick for the best 4K game of the bunch. We've got about five listed here, six actually. Um, mainly because it was trying to emulate the CG look that the uh, film had because mm. it released of course with the film next beside it mm -hmm. and it, uh, it does a great job of picking up that soft uh, aesthetic that mm -hmm. the film also has. So kudos to it, I, I think it, it looks smashing on a 4K TV even though it isn't a truly native picture. Yep. It has a lot of techniques which back it up and sort of reinforce its claim as a uh, uh, a worthwhile contender for yeah. 4K TV. It's a tentpole title for the PlayStation 4 Pro, no doubt about it, highly recommended. And uh, the same uh, 4K upscaling technique will be used in on Insomniac's next game, which is uh, the Spider-Man title. Yeah. So yeah, screenshots of that have been looking good, so expecting big things there. Okay, so next one. Next up is The Last of Us, which happens to be the first game I tried on the screen, uh, a native 4K. Obviously, there's a lot of last-gen titles which have transferred pretty, uh, pretty seamlessly to 4K, just upscaling to that resolution without losing anything in terms of frame rate. So um, this is among them. I mean, it, you get two modes, of course. There's yep. the 60fps mode and 30fps mm -hmm. mode. 1800p at 60fps. Yeah, um, I'd say both hold up pretty well. There are some uh, aliasing issues still because I think the lighting buffer has a different method for yep. outputting. Um, so you still see a few jaggies here mm -hmm. and there. But one of the reference levels we use is Bill's Town because it opens up with this beautiful forest level with lots of fine detail. And the assets, even though they're PS3 era, they really hold up. Yeah, that's the big sort of takeaway for me, is just how well the original artwork that Naughty Dog put together for PlayStation 3 works, not just at 1080p on The Last of Us Remastered on base hardware, but actually works really well at 4K. So kudos to the team there. So next up is Infinite Warfare. Mm -hmm. This is similar in a respect to uh, it's a current gen game. We've got a lot of last gen stuff which works well at 4K, but this is uh, like Ratchet and Clank in that they've managed to create a 4K-esque experience using uh, various technologies. I think Infinite Warfare's got a whole bunch of them. Yeah, managed. yeah, dynamic resolution scaling, uh, temporal super sampling, a kind of very filmic uh, post-process pipeline. I mean, it's not a title to be uh, looking for like pin sharp uh, geometric edges that really show that the right no. this is a 4K image. But in terms of the overall integrity of what you're seeing and the quality of what you're seeing, uh, and the fact that it does run pretty much flawlessly at, four, um, at 4K 60 frames per second, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, dynamic resolution scaling there uh, really works well. So this was a big surprise to me. I mean, you know, generally speaking, across the years, Call of Duty titles have been losing that 60 frames per second lock in uh, the name of spectacle. Yeah, which but, usually sells a game, sadly. Yeah, but Infinity Ward have really doubled down on this one. So, you know, the, the bottom line is you're getting the complete package here. A really impressive 4K presentation plus super smooth 60 frames per second action, seemingly whatever's going on. 
Cool, next up is Skyrim. Now mm -hmm. we've- Just a have, quick one here. Yeah, I mean, it is, um, it's not like The Last of Us because The Last of Us seem to uh, benefit from having very confined areas, which means Naughty Dog could really improve the art direction of it. Whereas Skyrim has to cater in an open world design where not all aspects of it really hold up well. I think the PS4 Pro uh, version has sort of top PC settings, it's the remastered version, so yeah. it goes beyond that, but uh, even at 4K, it doesn't hold up in all respects. Well, the game is five years old now, yeah, and unfortunately, the enhancements made to the special edition kind of don't disguise that fact. No. I think there's even a, a thread on Reddit talking about upscaled textures in it, which is a bit grim. <laughs> but, you know, the point is that this game does have harsh geometric edges, so if you want to kind of validate a, a full 4K presentation, there you go, it works. And yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's Skyrim at 4K. You can't really argue with that. No? Uh, FIFA 17. Yep. Now, this is a last minute addition by me because I thought, hang on, sports content is usually the thing broadcast uh, uses to push their next resolution standard. So we had it with 1080p, you know, they'd always advertise, you know, sports packages. And the same goes for the video game scene. You have FIFA, uh, which always shows off, you know, the character, the players down below. You can see it at a high level of detail. You can tell which player it is just by looking. And that's not something you could have done at uh, lower resolutions. Mm. Uh, it really benefits. This mm. sort of game really benefits from 4K, and this is a native 4K title yep. as well. No checkerboarding, nothing like that. It doesn't appear to be, mm. and it's 60 FPS as well. Yep. Uh -huh. That's the other thing. I mean, sports content on TV has always driven 60 hertz as well. 50 hertz, unfortunately, in Europe. Yeah. But there we go. Uh, last but not least is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, I mean, when John looks at it, he obviously got his pro a little later than us, and we were on patch 105 then, which had some uh, kind of jittery frame pacing issues. This has now been sorted in patch 106, and, well, I think this may well be the definitive game for showing off what the Pro is capable of. And, uh, well, we'll first of all tackle its 4K credentials. Checkerboard, 2160p here compared to 1080p 30 on the base hardware. So you're getting a huge resolution boost without any compromises to visual quality. Very slight performance drops in hub areas, but otherwise it's completely locked. And well, it might not look quite as good as, you know, the full 4K experience with a Titan X Pascal, but, you know, for a 150, 160 watt power budget on a $400 box, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so that is our picks for 4K uh, uh, titles on PlayStation 4 Pro. So what's the next category? Well, this is the next important one, which is the best use of HDR. Okay, yeah. Um, technically, you can do HDR on the standard PS4 as well. That's right, so, so all of these games, if you've got an HDR screen, they will work perfectly well there as well. And top of the pack has to be Ratchet and Clank again, mm -hmm. because yeah. it is that uh, super vibrant, bright, punchy aesthetic, which yeah. really shows it off. Yeah, so here's the thing. I mean, obviously, a lot of screens out there claim HDR support, and, well, it kind of varies in terms of implementation. So the lower end screens uh, will be taking the HDR signal, but in terms of the visual return that you'll be getting on screen, uh, it could mm. be virtually minimal, it could actually look worse than SDR. So there are two screens which really show off their stuff. Um, right yeah, there is the Sony ZD9, which is what Sony used to uh, present the PlayStation 4 Pro, 65-inch uh, <laughs> screen, $4,000. Uh, but there's also mm. the LG OLED screens, and uh, they are still very, very expensive, but the prices are dropping like a stone on there, and it's to the point now where the 55-inch OLED B6V is pretty awesome and pretty fairly priced as well. Yeah. So not too bad there. But you know, the bottom line is that, you know, this screen here, for example, uh, is a Panasonic DX750. This is a kind of mid-range screen, not quite the full HDR implementation, but you can still get some great results. But despite that, uh, we demoed Ratchet & Clank on this, yep. and it still showed off its, uh, yeah. its benefit. Here's the thing. I mean, if you are seeing a night and day difference on a screen like this Panasonic, then you kind of get the idea that it is a pretty awesome HDR implementation in game. And it kind of just adds to Ratchet & Clank's sort of desirability as a great game, not just on base PlayStation 4 hardware, but also on Pro. Uh, continuing in that vein, it seems like Sony's uh, studios are generally the ones to push forward HDR 
And so we had a double bill from Naughty Dog, which was mm -hmm. The Last of Us yeah. and Uncharted 4. Mm -hmm. Now, the latter of those, I thought, was smashing. It just, I mean, we used the, uh, the sort of beat sequence where you're traveling between islands on a boat. And uh, I believe that was the area they demoed yeah. it for you. Yeah, the, the PlayStation meeting, they showed the island and uh, you had some fantastic uh, extra detail essentially resolved from like the beach, for, uh, for example, where you would see kind of the grains of the sand where yeah, you couldn't... Yeah, I really noticed that. It's like specular highlights Yeah, on the floor. you couldn't really see it on, on the base uh, PlayStation 4, on the, sorry, the non uh, HDR version, of course, the base PS4 does support yeah. HDR. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, The Last of Us as well. And The Last of Us. Um, I guess we can, yeah, there's a bunch of scenes in that which really show off. I think it's Uncharted 4 which mm. made the biggest use of it and I was uh, most impressed by that. Um, and of course, there's Infamous, Second Son and yeah. First Light. Yeah, um, uh, I think uh, probably First Light is the one to, to kind of roll out as a demo. I mean, the infamous titles, I think they've kind of aged pretty badly over yeah, the... Yeah, they came on very early in the life cycle mm, of the generation, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, the games look fantastic, there's no doubt about it. And First Light, the main hero fetch, has a kind of neon power set. So you get yeah. these fantastic visual effects uh, playing out on screen and HDR highlighting on those powers just looks pretty amazing. So if you want a decent HDR demo, then uh, Infamous First Light, check it out. Sadly, there is no Rise of the Tomb Raider in this category. I know. Uh, it was a bit of a shame because they demoed quite that feature on PC, I believe. Yeah, uh, GTX 1080 launch in April. I, I was there. They were actually showing a uh, PC version running in HDR. It looked glorious. Maybe that will come further on yeah. down the road. Uh, Nick and Crystal Dynamics have done well to kind of patch in and fix things post-launch. Uh, so last on this category, uh, we should mention Final Fantasy XV is yep. one of John's picks. You know, yep. uh, we, we've uh, not had much time to play it ourselves, sadly. But we haven't played it at all here. I mean, we've, we've got a game, but we haven't played it. So, okay, so what is the next category? It is the best use of 1080p, which is really important, I think. Uh, I think it's understated by Sony in some respects because uh, you know, obviously they've got 4K televisions to sell off and uh, obviously that's the, the sort of pioneering technology of the moment and um, for myself definitely I'm looking for the benefits of pro with a, a 1080p screen mm. as someone who hasn't adopted it. Yeah I think it's been really the kind of weak part of the pro launch. I agree yeah. I mean when we're seeing stuff like Ezio Collection running at 1080p when it could be downsampling from 4k when we're seeing The Last of Us remove the super sampling option yeah. for 1080p owners uh, when we're seeing Batman Arkham City removing the unlock frame rate, which many people actually did want, uh, not me personally, but, no. but you know, I think the bottom line is that 1080p support for the Pro has been lacking. So uh, this is going to be uh, about the titles that do work. Right, and the uh, top of the list is Rise of the Tomb Raider yeah. with its own 1080p mode. And I think that's running with ultra settings from PC, is that correct? Or um, high, the higher end? Yeah, as you say, it is kind of like, uh, they've tried to push the envelope in terms of PC's uh, available presets. So the engine was, uh, you know, obviously has a much higher visual fidelity there. Uh, additional shadows, uh, view distance, uh, better texture filtering. Uh, the whole sort of uh, shooting match. They've tried to uh, hit the 30 frames per second target, but use as many of the PC's higher end visual features as possible. And we'd like to see more of that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's got to be one of the better uses of it, but there's also a case for uh, Battlefield 1. Yes. I mean, this is a kind of curious one because it is using higher resolution modes. It's got a dynamic resolution scaling and temporal super sampling again. So it is actually running at uh, much higher resolutions, anything up to a sort of 1600p area, wasn't it? Maybe even higher. Yeah, I mean, it was a uh, fluctuating between, was it uh, 900p and 1080p on the base PS4? So it's a, ne a decent upgrade in itself. Mm. And uh, you get a few extra effects on that as well. Yeah, so you're, um, I mean, I think the, the point is that the downsampling is definitely in effect there for 1080p users and it looks really good. In terms of visual consistency, it might actually look better than it running on a 4K screen. And you're getting additional effects. There's, I think, additional terrain features, uh, certainly uh, texture resolution moves up to the PC's high setting from a mixture of medium and high. And uh, there's more uh, GPU accelerated particles, stuff like that. And of course, uh, something we'll move on to later, which is higher performance. 
So yeah, PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, Battlefield 1, uh, 1080p, awesome. So for the majority of games running on 1080p screens, we're looking at super sampling as the main benefit. I think Shadow of Mordor fits the bill there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this was a su surprise for us because we kind of picked it up on this one quite late in the day. Uh, two modes with Shadow of Mordor, uh, one which enhances visuals at 1080p and the other which runs at 4K. But crucially, if you're running on a 1080p screen, it'll downsample that for you, so super sampled image. Um, I think of the two, I would go with the 4K. It all practically renders the whole game at native 4K. There is a dynamic resolution going on, which mm -hmm. drops it to uh, sort of 80% on each axis. But um, of the two, I, I didn't really notice the visual uh, sort of graphical detail settings boosted in the other mode. Yeah. So I would take Super Sample. You just get time. less popping, don't less you? Less popping. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you can basically favor less popping, or you can Super Sample down from a much higher resolution and it essentially solves all of the aliasing issues that the game has or definitely mitigates them greatly and in that case it's a great 1080p title but I think it's more the point that the developer has actually uh, given the choice mm. so 1080p users can actually choose between the two modes and uh, that's kind of our bugbear with a lot of games that they don't offer 1080p users the chance to access those 4k modes because they do have value in the same vein, I think uh, Paragon is another game which adds visual features, but it's... Yeah, uh, yeah just a quick one here. I mean, um, it's not a game that we can recommend as an awesome game as such, but uh, you get a resolution boost from 900p to 1080p, additional foliage, extra draw distance, and uh, it's just an example, almost like a what if, if you like. What yeah. if the Pro was used for... Uh, giving 1080p ultra equivalent settings as opposed to you know 4k modes etc. I'd love that to be a standard across every PS4 Pro supported game just to, that option to have the yeah I think the, I think the reason that you know on on Paragon they can do it, it was a 60 Hertz game to begin with so it's a 1080p 60 Hertz on uh, uh, situation on Pro and uh, last but not least is Titanfall 2 an already very pristine looking game thanks to that temporal AA solution they've got yep. going mm -hmm. but with uh, the game rendering at, I think it's 1440p native on yeah. Pro, uh, when you downsample that to 1080p, it looks super, so absolutely sublime. Yeah, and um, I mean, the game looks pretty good in on the base PlayStation 4. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with it at all. Yeah, but the point is that you do get that uh, combination of downsampling from 1440p, but that 1440p frame buffer actually benefits also from temporal super sampling. So, you know, you're getting a really high quality image that's then being downscaled down to 1080p. And I suspect that in multiplayer in particular, where the base PS4 uses the dynamic scaler much more aggressively, you'll see a big boost there. So yeah, good stuff. So that's the end of the best of 1080p category. Okay, what's up next then? Next up is best performance improvements. Now we've already touched on Rise of the Tomb Raider, which gets the yeah. uh, sort of boost to 60 FPS. I think that's a key one. Um, but I'd also like to pick up on some we haven't mentioned at all. Uh, for me, I think the standout would be The Last Guardian. Okay. Which when you run in the 1080p mode, uh, you lose the resolution benefits in the uh, 4K. Uh, oh, by the way, this is all from the PS4 Pro's front end, so you've got to select the mode there and then yeah. you go into the game and then you get the benefits. Yeah, another irritation where you can't choose in-game which mode you want to use. But uh, the option is there, and if you have 1080 to be selected, the Last Guardian runs smoother than any other option, especially mm -hmm. compared to the base PS4, which is really A lot of complaints. Great. A lot of complaints about that and essentially if you want to play this eagerly awaited game at its fullest potential on available hardware yeah. you need to run uh, the game in 1080p mode on PlayStation 4 Pro that's the way to go yeah uh, bear in mind there's uh, like 20 FPS sub 20 FPS drops on base this still doesn't iron out all of them but it's, no. uh, uh, it is the way I'll be playing it this Christmas you know when I get the chance to fully play mm -hmm. it all the way through okay um, in that same vein uh, Final Fantasy 15 we haven't really touched on this game too much so far but yeah it's in our HDR picks I think the bottom line there is that at the moment it suffers from some really severe frame pacing issues mm. now uh, on the pro if you use the high quality rendering mode you still have uh, a lot those, of frame pacing issues yeah actually it's the light mode that's the light it mode yeah, yeah that is actually running at native 1080p mm. 
and it solves most of the frame pacing issues there. So that's how John remarkably has been playing it, even though he has access to a 4K screen and a higher resolution mode. Uh, you know, some people aren't really uh, affected or, or can't really notice frame pacing issues, but you know, yeah, it's it got to be sorted out. Perceptibly, it's like, uh, it's equivalent to a frame rate drop. It looks, just... it looks bad, I yeah, think it's the bottom does. line, okay. Yeah, and also there is Battlefield 1. Yeah, then this has been an interesting one because it runs much faster than the Pro. The campaign is like 60 frames per second. You and Dave did a great comparison yeah. of uh, performance uh, between the two consoles. You were kind of in the same, uh, yeah. sort of chasing behind him as, his, mm -hmm. uh, as a squad member. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to be able to see what the differential was between base and PlayStation 4 in multiplayer. Yeah, the key part. And uh, yeah, there, are, there were some drops there. They've actually since improved performance there, I understand. Yeah, there's a new patch which we haven't touched on. We need uh, Dave in the office to sort that one out, yeah. but uh, we'll get to that in the new year, I think. Yeah, uh, and uh, but the bottom line is that the Pro runs multiplayer significantly faster than base, and this will give you an advantage during gameplay. I noticed something as high as 10 FPS, maybe yep. 15 when compared. It's not a solid 60, but it is a big enough improvement. We've got to throw it in there. Yeah. So those are sort of the, the, the three, four big picks for performance gains, mm -hmm. um, if you want that. So that rounds out pretty much yeah, all the uh, that's categories. that's pretty much it. That's everything. That's all of our recommendations for PS4 Pro. Now, of course, there are some awesome PS4 Pro games which we haven't covered, but really, you know, this is about showcasing those individual categories. There mm -hmm. are a few missing in action titles as well. Uh, now, uh, before the PS4 Pro launched, I, and when it was called Neo still, I ran a, a piece on the top 10 most wanted, yep. I think it was top 10 maybe in another number, the games that I really wanted to see on with yep. the support. A lot of those never materialized. Of course, no. I put down Bloodborne, I put down Dark Souls 3. The Witcher. Um, the Witcher. Metal Gear. Metal Gear 5, uh, Solid 5, yeah. I mean, there's also GTA 5, which is uh, conspicuously absent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm kind of hoping, because they do continually uh, tweak GTA 5 with new yeah. online modes, so I'm hoping that they will put a pro mode in there. But yeah, the other ones, uh, I was really disappointed The Witcher didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, CD Projekt Red have said outright that we don't have the resources to do this. Mm. We're working on our next project, and so that's that. Uh, and also, sadly, I think From Software have previous history in uh, not really, uh, uh, you know, ca carrying on support mm. with their titles. Uh, so Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 may not ever get anything. But so. the good news is, going into 2017, Sony has mandated that all titles should have pro support. So yeah, hopefully we'll see more along the lines of Rise of the Tomb Raider and fewer along the lines of Return to Arkham or the Ezio Collection. Ezio collection yeah. <laughs> we do have Fallout 4 uh, coming. It was yeah. like a, a, a month ago that we, the Bethesda that announced they'd actually have a patch for PS4 Pro. I'd be interested to see what they do yep. with that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, still pending, so we'll see. We'll check that out as soon as we can. But I think we're going to leave it there for now. Right. Okay, so, well, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us throughout 2016 and uh, we'll see you next year.